There exists a hidden operating system of the mind. Heraclitus called it Panta Ray. I'm about to show you exactly how it works, and once you see it, you'll never unsee it. This is liquid logic. A pattern of thought that slips past your opponent's defenses, adapts in real time, and survives even the harshest cognitive storms. If you want to outthink the rigid world around you, stay. Because this is how you become unstoppable. Once you learn to think like water, you will never fear obstacles again. Liquid logic is what you find when you push logic past its boiling point. It's what emerges when the binaries fail to hold, the one and the zero blur. The cause no longer precedes the effect. The observer becomes the observed and then slips out of both roles like a snake shedding its skin. Standard logic is architecture. It is brick by brick. Liquid logic moves in spirals. Liquid logic is the mad dance beneath the surface, the spiral whirlpool of thought that refuses to be pinned down by rigid definitions. You might think it's irrational, but it is supra-rational. It flows, it loops, it contradicts without cancelling. To glimpse it, you must first loosen the noose of Aristotelian thinking. A is not just not B. At times, A and B exchange places in a secret game no one observes. Beneath the surface, A and B flow into one another, erasing the lines you thought were fixed. In dreams, it's normal. You open a door and fall into your grandmother's voice. In mystic visions, it's also also natural. A single word becomes an entire season. In the psychedelic, it is law. A paradox is not a problem to be solved, but a portal to be entered. I remember reading a passage from an ancient book called the Zohar, where the logic is described as a garment of light, one that must be shed if you wish to touch the raw essence of divinity. God's left hand is justice, his right, mercy. He is one and many, masculine and feminine, time full and timeless. The logic is fractal, recursive, hydrated. It refuses to crystallize. Liquid logic is the syntax of dreams and the grammar of gods. It is how the oracle speaks, how myth metabolizes trauma, how metaphor becomes more accurate than fact. In chaos theory, strange attractors govern systems that seem unpredictable, but only seem so. Beneath the wildness, a deeper structure reveals itself when seen over time. These systems, such as weather, heartbeat rhythms, economies, follow non-linear logic. They don't repeat exactly, but they also don't behave randomly. They follow fluid patterns, like the folds in smoke or the movements of a flock of birds. Order emerges from within chaos, but not in a way you can isolate into a rule. You must learn to see across time and across dimensions. To truly grasp a chaos system, you cannot ask, what does this mean? You must ask, what does this want to become? In liquid logic, language isn't a tool for naming things. It is an event that creates things in its wake. Language doesn't simply describe the world. It summons it, pulls it into being as we speak it. Words are fractals of experience expanding and contracting with each utterance, becoming more than what they signify, becoming the experience of meaning itself. This is why certain phrases don't just convey information. They shiver the bones of reality. Take, for example, the phrase, I am. It doesn't simply describe you. It constructs you. At the moment of utterance, you are recreated, sliced from the eternal stream of possibilities, frozen into a singular identity. Each phrase, each sentence, is a force that both defines and limits the space it inhabits. Consider, I am as a ritual flare, a flare fired into the void to signal your coordinates to the universe. It's less about identity than about territory, a declaration to existence itself that 
Here is where you stand, a small sovereign nation planted in a borderless cosmos. If you could see with liquid logic, you'd notice that words are not only building blocks, but also wardens. They guard the shape of your mind, even as they promise to express it. In that sense, I am is both your crown and your shackles. It enthrones you as the narrator of your tale, yet imprisons you in its grammar. In liquid logic, language is like water, both a shape and an agent of transformation. Every utterance displaces and distorts, just as a wave reshapes the shore. The mind's attempts to trap meaning in words fail, because the words aren't stable, they are currents, endlessly flowing, with new shapes rising, with each change in the stream. What we call perception is merely a filter. It is the lens through which we project our version of the world. And like any lens, it distorts. In this way, perception becomes recursive. We don't perceive objects or truths. We perceive the process of perceiving, an endless feedback loop where the act of seeing becomes as significant as the thing seen. The objects dissolve back into the seeing, and the mind unhinges from its role as the observer, becoming part of the object observed. The very nature of the subject-object divide starts to blur. The world is not a thing we look at, it is a thing we become moment to moment in each interaction. It is an experience unfolding like a spiral, unraveling itself as we attempt to grasp it. My favorite prism to look at this is alchemy. So hear me out, apprentice of the subtle art, and listen. For I will flow in one uninterrupted current from the simplest drop to the most secret labyrinth. Liquid logic is like water that thinks. In the most basic sense, it means a way of reasoning that moves, adapts, and never hardens. It is unlike the stiff chains of normal step-by-step -step logic, which you can easily break if pulled too hard. Liquid logic is flexible, like a stream finding its path around a rock. It does not fight obstacles head-on, but curves around them, absorbing contradictions without shattering. In the language of the alchemists, this is the first principle of mercury, a metal that is also a liquid, quick to slip through any container. Mercury is the archetype of the mind that refuses to be caged, a reasoning that cannot be nailed down. The alchemists spoke of solve et coagula, to dissolve, and to rebind. Liquid logic is the solve. It breaks apart fixed mental structures, melts down the crust of habits, questions, categories, and safe answers. Like a powerful acid, it dissolves the solid walls of dogma, so you can see what was hidden behind them. But this is only the first step. Once dissolved, the mind must coagulate again, reshape, reform, crystallize in a higher pattern. If you dissolve but never rebind, you end up a puddle of confusion. If you rebind without ever dissolving, you become a statue, frozen and fragile. So the alchemical mind learns to flow, but also to shape. It becomes a living vessel, strong enough to contain change. The flask that holds this quicksilver cannot be made of brittle glass. It must be a spirit vessel, something flexible, able to expand, contract, and transform. That is you, the alchemist, the container for a thinking that is alive. On the deepest level, liquid logic is a dance between opposites. Mercury is the secret marriage of contradictions, metal yet liquid, stable yet moving, poison yet cure. Likewise, this logic embraces paradox. It does not fear the union of yes and no because it knows that only by holding contradictions can you reach a higher synthesis. 
when passion, the sulfur, marries mind, the mercury, something divine is born. This flowing logic does not simply wish to solve problems. It wishes to transmute the very way problems are seen. Each time you dissolve a hardened idea and then reshape it, you practice the philosopher's art. Each cycle you climb higher, spiraling toward a mind that is ever freer, ever subtler, ever closer to that legendary stone, the stone that is no stone, but a perfect liquidity of spirit, able to take any form. A young samurai in feudal Japan trained obsessively with the hardest wooden sword he could find. It was dense, heavy, and nearly unbreakable. He believed his sheer strength would make him unbeatable. But one day, his master switched it for a bamboo practice sword. Light, flexible, able to bend and whip through the air. The student scoffed, thinking it was weak. In sparring, the master moved effortlessly, redirecting blows and striking with speed the student couldn't predict. Every rigid block of the wooden sword was easily bypassed by the fluid arcs of the bamboo. The student was humiliated. After the match, the master told him, power means nothing if it cannot flow. A hard mind breaks, a flexible mind wins. If you want a mind that moves like water, start messing with your own habits, on purpose. Brush your teeth with the wrong hand, flip your ideas upside down, borrow your enemy's point of view for a day, hack your patterns before they calcify. When problems come up, don't charge them like a bull. Swirl around them, like a river finding the lowest gap. Whenever you think you're right, prove yourself wrong as an exercise, like a mental gym for flexibility. Purposely scramble your routines until they taste unfamiliar. Hold two impossible ideas at once until they blur. And challenge your own beliefs as if you were your own worst critic. When you feel confident, deliberately sabotage that confidence and rebuild it differently. Think of your mind as a swarm instead of a single creature, so no one can kill it in one strike. Liquid logic means you refuse to be cornered, mentally or emotionally, because your thoughts dissolve and reform before anything can grab hold. That's how you stay free.